Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? By the way, here and so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my dad. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great day. It is hump day, and you know what that means. That means we're going to be on the Dan Salio Show at 3.30, where basically they have me as the fresh meat, so to speak. Okay, the so to speak. And um, literally getting tag teamed uh, by Philly 500 and Dan Salio, that the Cowboys suck and everything else. But I think I got a little bit of extra ammunition today. In fact, I'm going to be working on a little bit more today. Um, just getting a few little clips to kind of throw back in their face. You know, kind of like... Why? Doesn't it seem that the Eagles took a shit on Jalen? And... The owner and GM did. The owner, the GM, and the head coach took a shit on their quarterback. Why? That's not the kind of attitude and environment I want to go into training camp. So I'm a little more prepared. And we're going to have a little bit more fun today with the Dan Salio show in Philly 500 because hey, we got a couple we got a couple little pieces because it seems like there's a whole lot of shit going on <laughs> in Philly right now uh, I I'm just saying uh, no disrespect but there's a lot of shit going on in Philadelphia right now disrespected yet does this defense have any heart Let's no talk. they suck I've been telling you all season they Philly they've shit on you oh. they've shit on you <laughs> don't you hear me Jordan <laughs> Carter, like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan? Uh. Caleb Carter, like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun today. In the meantime, we've got our Dallas Cowboys, and I am just so excited that we're seeing more and more drama in other places. In fact, it's getting harder and harder to find clips of them literally chastising the Cowboys. Like it used to be get up, used to be like every morning, it was trash the Cowboys. But lately, it's been kind of quiet on those shows. We've been following like Brandon Ayuk, they don't want me anymore, you know, that kind of stuff. Of course, the Eagles have been the gift that has been giving this offseason with all of the drama between Nick Sirianni, the front office, Jalen Hurts, and it's just kind of a mess, so to speak. In the meantime, you know, here's the thing that's kind of interesting to me, okay? Um, while we have so much going on, you know, the will Dak Prescott get a contract, to, you know, or not get a contract, you know, the Cowboys don't want him and all that. Dak Prescott is cool and chilling like a villain. Jack's got, Dak's got no worries, none. And it's funny because, um, shout out to Boss Cowboy. You know, I have to spend, I, I've got to find more time in the day. Maybe I will just give up sleeping. Because there's so much great content and stuff out there. Um, Boss Cowboy, I caught him yesterday and he was talking about 12 personnel, which, you know, is very personal to me. I love 12 personnel. I think, you know, the Cowboys using 12 personnel is the most versatile offense and one of their most productive ones when you have a quarterback like Dak Prescott and you have really good tight ends. It can really open up the field. And that was great by Boss Cowboy. And then today, I, can I find it? Um, I don't have it right here, but. Boss Cowboy um, had a little clip from uh, uh, from 105 The Fan, and they kind of admitted that 
uh, you know, with Trey Lance, they, they're kind of looking out there at practice, you know, because they've got the credentials, you know, us YouTubers don't. And they're kind of like, you know, Trey Lance is not looking like the replacement for Dak. That gamble that Jerry Jones took, and if, if the reason that they said let's trade for Trey Lance was to put pressure on Dak Prescott, Unlike in other organizations where the quarterback seems a little bit taken back, where you know Aaron Rodgers was pissed off about them getting Jordan Love, and maybe he knew Jordan Love was going to be pretty good, or <clears throat> how Jalen Hurts um, doesn't like having Kenny Pickett there, and you know kind of seems to be um, you know kind of pissed off. Dak Prescott's kind of taking Trey Lance under his wing. And working with them, you, you see, like, you know, they're almost like uh, the movie Life. I'm not going to say quite like the movie Life, but you understand. But it seems like there's no animosity there. Dak does not feel threatened whatsoever. And apparently, the practices let you know there's nothing to feel threatened about. And even if it was that Trey Lance was playing great, and you could look at that and say, you know, Dak, we got your replacement here. Uh, it's okay because I can guarantee you that there will be plenty of people that do want him. And so he's like, listen, I can only control the things that I can control. And what that is, is me being the best player on the field. Now, here's the thing that's interesting here. You know, I don't know where Jalen Hurts is right now. Or should I say uh, Jalen Owens? Or is it T.O. Hurts? Because that's what they're kind of calling them over there in Philly. Um, I don't know where he is, but I can tell you where my quarterback is. Tight end you. He is working out with the best tight ends in football. Throwing the football to them. Now, do you think that they would say, let's get a garbage quarterback so when we have our tight end training camp you know mini camp to try and you know work with people that we'll just get the worst quarterback out there to throw the football to them that we'll just get bums to throw to them no they got Dak Prescott there working with them and here's this is leadership here guys you may not like Dak Prescott you may not respect Dak Prescott you may not think that Dak Prescott is good I gotta tell you there's a lot of people that do listen in on this Is it me? Or does that one guy right there, the red, does that look like Fitz Magic? Does, does he look a little, little bit like Fitz Magic there? I, I swear he does. He looks like Fitz Magic. But I'm just pointing out that you've got Dak Prescott here working out. He ain't, you know, sitting there on the couch. The Cowboys ain't signed. He, listen, he is chilling like a villain. He is doing everything he can to be the best player he can and he's going to let his people take care of it and you know as much as people will say you know he sucks in this that i don't know how many people on the planet could survive the scrutiny the negative remarks and everything else that this guy goes under literally I don't understand how he doesn't go crazy and isn't in an insane asylum. Literally. Literally. You I, you can't turn on the sports talk shows. You can't listen to the radio. You can't read the news. Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody reads the newspapers anymore. Everywhere. Dak's a choker. Dak's, uh, you know, he's greedy. You know, D Dak this, Dak that. Yeah, I mean, and, and constantly everybody always looking for the replacement. Well, here's the problem for the Cowboys. Here is it in a nutshell. 
They have, I said this yesterday, they have no leverage whatsoever. Jerry Jones trading for Trey Lance thought maybe, hey, you know, former number one pick. They gave up three first-round picks. Maybe we can just plug that guy in, and he's going to go ahead and scare Dak into a cheap contract to keep him. Yeah. Right. And thus far, Trey Lance has not made that look good, and he's been into it for a year now. So here's the problem. With Dak Prescott, you're going to be an above 500 team, probably a playoff team which means you let him walk, you're in the back half of the draft, not the best place to try and find a quarterback. And even being in the front half of the quarterback uh, carousel doesn't mean that you're going to get one. C, Mac Jones. C, Zach Wilson. C, Josh Rosens of the world. To get there, you're going to have to use a whole bunch of draft capital. And we know they don't want to use draft capital because they look at it and say, that's how we build our team. And if you take all your draft capital for the next couple of years and have to put it into a quarterback and wait for him and can't replenish the supply, you're not going to get any better than you are with Dak Prescott. And Trey Lance is not going to be the answer. Even 105 fan is beginning to kind of let you know. So, now it's about figuring out the best way we can get this thing done to leave us room to operate. That's the bottom line. So, other news, of course, we know that the Cowboys have finally started to get a little bit busy. They've gone through and they've signed linebacker. They've gone with two UFL. Um, football players and linebacker Willie Harvey, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and Gary and Con- Con- Conley, um, cornerback, former first round draft pick um, of the Raiders back in 2017, played in the NFL for three years, and um, now trying to revive his career. Um, had a standout season with the DC Defenders. Cowboys brought them in, and we know we've had success with Brandon Albury and Kayvon Turpin and stuff, that this seems to be one of those supply lines that the Cowboys have. Between that and undrafted rookie free agents, the Cowboys seem to find players where others don't that are cheap. Let's be clear, cheap, cheap. I honestly love that they are able to find these guys, that we end up getting guys like Malik Hooker, on a discount, you know, nobody pats him on the back and says, well, damn, that was a great free agent signing. Um, you know, I can look and say, um, in comparison to what the Eagles paid for big play Slay as a free agent and the production they've got from him versus what the Cowboys ended up paying for Malik Hooker, you got to look and say Malik Hooker ended up being a hellacious, more better free agent pickup and value than what they did with Big Play Slay or Bradbury. So we have to at least recognize some of those things that are good. Now, maybe, just maybe, this is the beginning of the Dallas Cowboys actually ramping up a little bit more to start the process of really getting the team put together now that we know training camp will open up on the 24th or reporting to training camp will be on the 24th. Um, Maybe we're looking, and I hope that that we are going to be looking on the defensive line. I think that that is going to be this problem that we have. And we're going to look back and find out whether or not the Cowboys were good or not because of the move they made with the Detroit Lions. If us getting Cooper Beebe by trading back, if he is what we think he is, they may have had the steal of the draft. Taking their first round pick, moving back, getting a left tackle in Guyton, and taking the extra pick and getting a center. Guys, if they become two really good starters, you you, you, you can't say shit bad about the Cowboys on that one. You can't say shit bad about that one. And I will say, one of the things that I can look at is, this is kind of crazy. Because 
The Cowboys have done this before, and other times it's worked out really good. When they got Travis Frederick, they moved back. They traded with the San Francisco 49ers, moved back, and picked up the third-round pick and ended up getting um, Terrence Williams. I'm not going to say Terrence Williams was a great NFL wide receiver, but he was a serviceable guy that made some really good plays for the team. And basically, you got him for nothing. I could look and I could say, when we traded with the Eagles, with Micah Parsons moving back, you got Goldston, who has been, you know, unfortunately for Goldston, it's been a numbers game where he's been playing pretty good when he's had opportunities. The problem is we've just had so many defensive ends that he hasn't gotten an opportunity. Now this year is a chance for him to really, in a contract year, get an opportunity to play a bit more, and hopefully you're going to see dividends paid on that one. And if Cooper BB becomes your starting center for the next 10 years, man, you are golden. But not everybody is feeling good about the Cowboys right now. Tim Kalislaw, Kalislaw on um, Tim Kalislaw, of course, talking about the Cowboys and going all in on the Rich Eisen show, is not too bullish on the Cowboys right now. Let's listen in on him. So a uh, great season for the Stars. And, and I, I'd say you can call this obviously a great season for the Mavericks. But sure. uh, they fall shy of, of bringing a parade to the Metroplex. That now falls into the lap of the Dallas Cowboys for the rest of this calendar year. Tim, what are your thoughts on the uh, possibilities of that? Are you sure we just don't go back around to the Rangers and skip no. the Cowboys? It doesn't no. look like it's going to be the Rangers. Wow. I'll admit, uh, they had a... They had a catcher pitching against the Mets in the ninth inning last night of a fourteen to two game. I guess I, I I should not have I should not have skipped the defending World Series you're, champs. You're Tim. saying there's not going to be a repeat for a team. Uh, it's tougher. It's thirty three and thirty nine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw that out there at the moment. Yeah. But stranger things have happened yeah. post All Star break. I understand. But the, but but the real question to your point is, they just won a title. Mavs and Stars have been to conference finals two each the last two two or three years cowboys it's been 28 years since that nfc championship trip you know i've been a columnist for 26 years mm. and i said maybe i'll do this long enough to cover an nfc championship game that has the cowboys in it i don't know i may not i may not make it that far i wouldn't predict it this year they don't seem like a team that is all in or that has rebuilt their roster in any way to get better uh, they're they're going to depend on other teams' mishaps. Philadelphia continuing to flounder, although I, I think Philadelphia at least showed after their season they were serious about what went wrong. Changed both coordinators. Uh, seemed to have a pretty great draft. Seemed to make good moves. Cowboys seem to pretend like going 12-5 and five is all that matters. Ooh, and they ouch. think they're going to continue to do it without – without adding pieces other than other than the draft. So I think it's very, very tough. On top of all that, you've got the situation. C.D. Lamb needs a contract. Dak needs a contract. Micah Parsons is a year away from needing a contract. Uh, Mike McCarthy needs a contract. Uh, that's, that's a lot of people to be on the line when you haven't really added to – the depth chart. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's the sense of all in, right? And 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 that we keep well, we, <laughs> or we all keep, out. No, what well, we keep referring to all in because that's what Jerry said at the Senior Bowl for mm -hmm. crying out loud back in January. And this general sense yeah. of that meant all in, which is we are going to pull out any possible stop, free agency, and things of that nature to make some moves to supplement a roster that they think is championship worthy and get rid of the, some guys and bring in other guys who get the sense of what it means mm -hmm. to be a Cowboy to win a championship. But his all-in definition was we, we believe the people that we have built for last year are going to be the guys for this year, and we're going to go all in on these guys and they are going to have to prove it one year to stay, to get more years. And I've never really heard of a, an all-in definition like that. To me, to Tim, one of the stories of the 2024 NFL season is going to be the way that the Jones family, or, or Jerry in particular, handled being one and done by the Green Bay Packers. Mm, That's that it. Hurt. God, that hurt. And it was a, a shocking one and done with the Green Bay having 48 points with, what, 12 minutes to go. Um, yeah, and 
And best scenario, you have two draft pick offensive linemen starting. That's without any injuries. That's right away not a good sign. Uh, you don't have Tony Pollard. I don't have any understanding what the Zeke thing is all about. He can't possibly be a featured back, and I'm not sure he can be anything significantly helpful. But we'll, we'll see about that. Um, wow. They didn't go out and they went out and got Eric Kendricks. Mike Zimmer brought in Eric Kendricks, who didn't seem to really like Mike Zimmer at the end of his time in Minnesota. So that's an interesting mix. Uh, that that's their that's their free agency hall. So unless they had the greatest draft uh, of the last 10 years, um, I, I have a hard time seeing how this team is better than Detroit and better even than Philadelphia and certainly not better than San Francisco and how they've got Green Bay and all the other teams in the NFC that seem to be moving on. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day so, on the Roku channel. We got doom and gloom from the talking heads. Now, <clears throat> I have a theory. I have a theory. I'll go into it a little bit later. This video is getting kind of long-winded and stuff in here. On one of the things that is an advantage over major overhauls, and we'll talk about that at another time. Um, right now, I've got uh, a lot of work to do to get ready for Jacob Sports and Dan Salio for uh, the, the punch down or the fight. I don't know what we're going to call it, but it's something. Um, the thing that's kind of cool to me on this and people keep, you know, going at me and talking about, you know, you're too easy on it. It's like, just be cool, people. Just be cool. It's like the rope of dope. Okay. We're biding our time. We're waiting to make sure that when we hit them, that it hurts. When we hit them, that it hurts kind of like Tio hurts i'm mark holmes and i appreciate you guys peace out and have a great hump day